Right guys, welcome now to Tech Tuesday, which this week is on a Saturday because I couldn't record it earlier in the week as I was down south, but it's fine. It's, it's fine. And this week's show, <laughs> we're going to be looking at someone who has made a return to golf this week. And more importantly, what he has put into play, what he is currently using at the Hero World Challenge. It's an interesting mixture of clubs. We're also going to be looking at Tiger's shoes, which seem to have been kicking up quite a bit of fuss as well. And lastly, just to un-Tiger uh, the Tech Tuesday as well, we're going to be looking at a driver which has vertical grooves rather than normal grooves or or no grooves on the, on the face. It's groovy. Vertically groovy. It's a vertically groovy driver. So, first things first, let's have a look at what Tiger Woods has stuck into play at this week's Hero World Challenge because it's a fair mixture of clubs. So, the top end of the bag Tiger has put into play, which seems to be more popular with most tour players, a tailor made M2 driver. It's got a Mitsubishi Rayon Tenti shaft, which has been replicated as well, not to the exact length, obviously, not the exact same spec, but he's also in his 3 wood and interestingly, his 5 wood. Now, his 3 wood and his 5 wood are both tailor made M1s. This is interesting because if you think about how the M1 usually sits, it is normally an adjustable neck. However, Tiger's got them set up slightly differently. What people have been saying and what Tiger himself has come out and said is that he can tell the difference between a screw-headed club and a club head which has been glued. Now, the driver and the fairway woods, although they've still got the same sleeve attachment that TaylorMade uses, apparently the heads have been glued in place, so they are unadjustable. And apparently Tiger can tell the difference here. I'm really not sure about that. I, I can't see how he can tell the difference, but got to take his word for it. And if it is in his mind that he feels that a glued head is better than just simply a screwed in head, then, you know, fair play, he can do whatever he wants. It's tag woods. So the lofts on his woods. We have a 9.5 in the driver. We have a 15 degree in the three wood and a 19 degree in the five wood. And from there, he drops down to into into his irons. When we drop down into the irons, he's using his Nike VR Pro, and that sets up from a three to a pitching wedge. So despite all the clubs that he's been testing, you know, Nota Begay, a good friend of his, has banged on about the amount of clubs which are in his house, which equipment companies have sent for him to try, he's still sticking with the Nike irons. He doesn't need to change. I think that's the thing we need to remember with Tiger. He's putting in his bag what he wants to because he thinks and he feels that they perform the best for him. And it's interesting that he's sticking with a tried and trusted set of Nike blades. And I think that's one part of his bag that we shouldn't really expect to change too much. His driver and his five one, his three wood, I do expect that setup to alter a little bit, if I'm being honest with you. I think that's what he's tried so far and that's what he's found the best. I think they're the most liable to change first. I know he's already changed these just in from what he was using. You, you get what I mean, I'm sure. Tiger's wedges that he's got in are the VR Forge, and he's gone to a 56 and a 60. So there's no noticeable gap wedge within the bag. However, what Tiger tends to do with his iron setup is add loft. So rather than what a lot of manufacturers are doing at the moment in decreasing the amount of loft on irons, what Tiger does is tend to give more loft to his iron clubs. For him, that doesn't allow room to get that extra wedge in. And Tiger has obviously top loaded his bag as well. He's got that five wood in, which reduces the amount of room he has for wedges. However, he's such a great wedge player, normally, hopefully still is, that he won't really suffer that much with missing that gap, which I don't believe. Now, the two real interesting points in his bag, apart from obviously the driver, which is gonna get you know the big shouty newsy stories, is he's put the Scotty Cameron back in the bag. So one of his favorite putters, one of his most winning putters as well, his Scotty Cameron Newport GSS has gone back in the bag. Again, this is such a fantastic feather in the cap for Scotty Cameron and for Titleist. If you think about Rory switching, all of a sudden winning. If you think about Tiger now switching back to his Scotty Cameron, just imagine if in the next few months or so, he actually wins some tournaments. Yes, people are going to be talking about his swing. Yes, people are going to be talking about the top end of his bag. But a lot of people are going to notice because if he wins, he's obviously going to put well. 
how well the Scotty Cameron is performing. People are going to lose their minds over it. And for Scotty Cameron and for Titleist, what fantastic free PR. Because I'm pretty damn sure that they're not going to pay to get that club back in the bag. Tiger has put it in because he trusts it. And if he wins with it, wow, that is going to be awesome for them. For the golf ball, Tiger has plumped for a Bridgestone. And that is the Bridgestone B330S. Or the 330S, depending on yeah, how you want to say it. Now, the Bridgestone ball is an interesting one because Bridgestone actually have pulled out of the UK market. They came into the UK mm, to when I was an assistant back at Lillishaw. So we're going to be looking at seven years ago, something like that. And they had a real push to try and switch people into Bridgestone balls. And they're a fantastic ball. They really, really are. They're a very good product. But for whatever reason, they couldn't get anywhere in to title this market share. They couldn't get anywhere near Shrixen, who were very popular in the UK as well. They just couldn't seem to move the needle. So they've ended up pulling out. Now, I know that in the States, Bridgestone are actually a very popular ball. So it probably won't come as much of a shock to people over in the US and other parts of the world. But for people in the UK, they might be like, oh, oh. I don't really get it because we've not had that much of an opportunity to test out this product. So again, this is really interesting. I mean, all, all these clubs and all this equipment is interesting, but this for Bridgestone, again, is just absolutely fantastic because people who may not have used this ball before, all of a sudden are going to go out and they're going to buy it because they now think, well, Tiger thinks this is the best ball. Tiger Wood, possibly the best player who's ever lived, thinks this is the best ball in the market. I'm going to go buy it. I'm going to go play it. And it's the same, mainly, I think, for the drivers and the three woods, because those Nike irons, well, they're not available anymore. And as we go down to the putter and the ball, th these companies must be laughing themselves to sleep tonight on how lucky that they've got. Well, not lucky, because obviously great products, but how lucky they have this free advertisement in Tiger's bag. Other what Tiger is using is he's got some new shoes on his feet. These are the Nike TW17 gold shoes which he's using at the World Hero Challenge and yeah, what he's going to be using throughout the rest of the year. Rest of the year, rest of the year, this year, next year. It's December, it's not much of this year left. And they look, yeah, fairly interesting. They look like they're a combination between lace and Velcro, just in case one isn't good enough. And they look pretty sleek, they look pretty new, they don't look like the revolutionary technological advancement. And they look nice, I've got to be honest, I don't think they're the most attractive goal shoe which have ever been created. Uh, but again, it, it's that Tiger effect. And Nike understand that if they get a good looking product on Tiger, it is going to attract interest and it is going to sell. It'd be interesting to see what other players do because Tiger's not really been about, let's face it, within the last year and a half, pretty much two years because of the way he's been out and he's come back. So his brand, so to speak, has it now moved beyond him? Are players going to also be wearing Tiger Wood shoes when Tiger could be in the bay next to them warming up or playing with them during a round? That might be a bit of a, a strange combination, but we'll have to wait and see. And the last bit on Tech Tuesday today is a new vertical groove driver, which is going to be hitting the market at some time this year, maybe early next year. So this club has vertical groove technology and the company that have released it are called Vertical Groove Golf, oddly enough. If you have a look at the driver, you can, well, you can see what they're going for. You've got vertical grooves all across the face. You seem to have a crown which has different nubbins, which I imagine help to increase airflow or something like that. If you think about the aero burner, they had lots and lots of little ones of these across the top of the club. If that works or not, I'm not sure. It seems to have a fixed shaft, so it doesn't seem to be an adjustable club. And what the manufacturers claim, the Vertical Groove Golf claim, is that when you hit this driver, it starts to reduce the amount of spin either to the right or to the left. So I think they call it side spin. Side spin is not something which exists, by the way. It's just the way that the ball spins on an axis, either left or either to the right-hand side. Now, if you read through some of the literature on this, there's claims such as it's going to you know, reduce offline shots by up to 40% because of the reduction in the amount of side spin. It's not, we'll call it side spin, but you just know it's not side spin. The amount of side spin that's generated is reduced by 40%. Now, whenever a figure like that is banded about, I don't know, I, there's something about it that makes me very, very uneasy. 
the amount of golfers who I see for lessons and the ones who come to me with a big slice, it doesn't matter what grooves are going to be on that club face. It really, really doesn't. It's the angle of the club face at the point of impact around what they're doing with their path, which creates that big curving shot. What the grooves are doing on the club face, I, I highly doubt if they're going to reduce things by 40%, but I've not hit the product yet. So it's very easy for me to be dismissive of something new. As always, I'd like to get my hands on it and give it a go. But as always, guys, please comment below. Let me know what you think about this driver. Let me know what you think about Tiger's new setup as well and how you think he's going to do going forward, fingers crossed, injury-free. So thank you so, so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on my other social media platforms as well. And we will see you down here next time.